Amalek in history. How did this concept evolve? All Jewish people are taught and are encouraged to follow 613 commandments or mitzvot. There are three mitzvot or commandments about Amalek that are part of these 613 commandments. Mitzvot 591 to 613 deal with laws of sovereigns and their wars. Three of them relate with Amalek, particularly 598, 599, and 600. This is what 598 says, blot out seed of Amalek. 599, remember what Amalek did to us. And 600, don't forget his evil deeds. Now, we already know Amalekites as a distinct people group ceased to exist by the time of King Hezekiah in the 8th century BC. How do the rabbis interpret the Mitzvot 599 to wipe out the descendants or the seed of Amalek? Most of the rabbis agree that it was not a commandment to be executed today, since we do not know who the real descendants of the Amalekites are. Some rabbis would explain that God would perform the elimination of Amalek but Jews are commanded only to remember what Amalek did to them. We need to understand that there was a shift in the Jewish understanding of who Amalek was. In the post-biblical times, the term and the concept associated with Amalek went through reinterpretation and reappropriation. The rabbis view the mitzvah to wipe out the descendants of Amalek as a call to oppose and eradicate evil forces or ideologies that threaten the well-being of Jewish people or humanity in general. In their view, Amalek becomes a metaphor for all those who do injustice and aggression against innocents. Jews are taught the importance of remembering and confronting injustice in every generation. Also, Israelis have applied this term Amalek to those who expressed strong hatred against the Jews in various time periods, to those expressed anti-Semitic sentiments. From that perspective, Amalek would be a person or a group that is primarily driven by their unmitigated hatred against the Jews. The semantic horizons of the term has been expanded over time. You can see how this term Amalekites are transmutated from referring to a distinct nomadic desert tribes to people with anti-Jewish ideologies. In the modern times, Amalek or Amalekites have come to represent an irreconcilable enemy that wants to destroy Jews. And so Jews in post-biblical times have associated their various enemies with Haman or Amalek. Some groups have been identified as Amalek or anti-Semitic, Romans, Nazis, Stalinists, ISIS, and others. Some individuals have been identified as Amalek, Hitler, Stalin, and others. Some Hasidic rabbis have identified ideologies such as atheism as Amalek. This is a metaphorical application of the term Amalek as someone who opposes God and God's chosen people. So in summary, the term Amalek can be somewhat compared with anti-Semitism. When talking about Amalek, Israelis today do not think of physical descendants of ancient Amalekites. Rather, they think of the spirit of Amalek that is still at play, the prejudice, the hatred, the violence, orchestrated against the Jews in various parts of the world, make them remember Amalek, their ancient nemesis. If you notice the occasions when this term has been used, it has been used whenever the survival of the Jewish people was threatened by external forces. Netanyahu on Amalek, what has he actually meant? In the aftermath of Hamas attack on Israel, on October 7th, Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu told the soldiers and the nation to remember what the Amalek has done to you. In this case, he was referring to the enemy that launched an unprovoked attack on Israel. First, I would like to explore whether this application of Amalek analogy to this particular case is reasonable. Second, whether Bibi called for the genocide of Palestinians when he applied the Amalek terminology. First, did Hamas behave like Amalek on October the 7th? Is it a correct identification? Israel was getting ready to observe Shimhat Torah, the celebration of the annual completion of the reading of the Jewish holy book in their synagogues. At 6.29 a.m., Hamas launched 3,000 rockets and attacked on Israeli army installations and communities near the Gaza border. More than 1,400 Israelis died, most of them unarmed civilians. They attacked Israeli communities, slaughtering families and children and taking hostages hundreds of them. Even peace activists who worked for peace between Israel and Palestinians were taken as hostages. 
From an Israeli perspective, this attack was unprovoked and orchestrated with utmost hatred against the Jews. Hamas attacked the most vulnerable, just like the Amalekites attacked those lagging behind in Rephidim. There is plenty of similarity between the attack of Amalekites and the Hamas killing spree on October 7th. They view Hamas as driven by the same hostile spirit of Amalek, exacting vengeance against the civilians, not military combatants. We can understand why Bibi Netanyahu applied this Amalek analogy in his speech. Now to the question, what Netanyahu meant when he used the Amalek reference? There are two possibilities. One, he called for the indiscriminate genocide of Palestinians, or he was calling for the consolidation of Israelites to counter the threat that they were facing. Many in pro-Palestinian media quickly point out the reference to Amalek and its close association with the call to blot out Amalekites completely from the face of the earth, an indiscriminate destruction of the enemy. However, on close examination of Netanyahu's speech, he was appealing to the collective memory of the Jewish people to consolidate against the forces that tried to destroy them. Robert Spencer thinks in these similar lines. What is an example in the Old Testament of the fa of a context directed call to kill a certain group? Well, for example, you have the uh, killing of the Amalekites. The Amalekites are an ancient people that have died out. There aren't any Amalekites today, and so there is a, a command in the Old Testament that the Israelites should hunt down and kill the Amalekites because the Amalekites are irredeemably evil, and uh, even the children and so on. And this is something that is often invoked today to make the claim that Judaism and Christianity, since this is part of the Christian Bible as well, are just as violent or equally capable of being violent as the uh, teachings of Islam. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu actually aided this case recently, inadvertently, by referring to this passage when he was calling upon Israelis to fight Hamas in the wake of the October 7th massacres. The thing is, though, that Netanyahu was referring to it metaphorically in terms of the Amalekites standing for the people who are evil who need to be combated. And he was not calling, obviously, for the genocide of the Gazans or anybody else. I think he is right. Bibi was not calling to commit the genocide of the Palestinians. He was reminding the nation of the gravity of the threat they were facing. People like Cheng overreact to Bibi's Amalek reference in an attempt to highlight the Palestinian suffering. Now we can debate whether it is right to use a controversial text about Amalek in the context of the ongoing war. One thing is clear, God's command to kill Amalek was limited to a specific time and period in history. When we think about it, it also has its own difficulties to deal with. But we must remember that it is not applicable to our times. Any attempt to apply this passage literally in our times is incompatible with the scriptural context and its intention.